PBS this year is running its Great American Read series. It's compiled a list of 100 books, and at the end, one of them will be named America's Best Loved Novel. It will not, by the way, be a book by Webster Grove's native Jonathan Franzen. Time Magazine once called him the Great American Novelist. He's won all kinds of literary awards, but none of his books is on the list of 100. He might be okay with that, though, because in the past he's had some things to say about popularity. When we met him a few years ago, he had just released a book about Jonathan Franzen, the kid growing up in Webster Groves. He also had some things to say about that little dust-up he had with Oprah Winfrey. Mr. Sims, hi. Um, it's, it's nice to see um, my uh, so many old friends here tonight. Jonathan Franzen hasn't lived here in a long time and doesn't have much reason to come back since his parents died. That's one of the things he writes about in The Discomfort Zone, coming back to sell the family house in Webster. He writes about high school and his elaborate pranks, about fellowship, the Congregational Church youth group he belonged to in the 1970s, about girlfriends and relationships. She grilled her most trusted daughter-in-law on the idea While Franzen is a critically acclaimed writer, a part of the New York literary scene, he's not one of those writers like, say, Tennessee Williams, who escaped St. Louis and had little good to say about it. Is it true that Tennessee Williams did not want to be buried here? Did not want to be buried here, but his brother buried him with his family. I don't want to be buried, period. I have no particular geographical requirements about where I'm not buried, but... Uh, uh, just like to postpone all of that as long as I possibly can. He, uh, yeah, well, Williams, um, Williams being a gay man may have had an additional level of grievance with the relatively constricting environment he grew up in. I, I, it would be obscene of me to nurse a grudge against this place that in fact was a, a wonderful place to grow up and that made a place for me even though I was kind of a weird kid. I somehow managed to, almost unique among my writer friends now, have a happy high school experience. Um, and that really colors your, your memory of a place forever. If you manage to find some way to exist in high school without daily misery, um, you're gonna love that city forever, <laughs> and I, I do. Um, I Franzen think thinks growing up in the Midwest gave him an extra couple of years of innocence from which to view the wider world. He considers other authors with similar roots among his favorites, Mark Twain, Willa Cather, Hemingway, Fitzgerald. But Franzen couldn't have escaped his roots if he'd tried, since he came from a town that, it seemed everybody else, thought they knew. He writes about that, too. As an adult, when I say the words Webster Groves to people I've just met, I'm often informed that I grew up in a suffocatingly wealthy, insular, conformist town with a punitive social hierarchy. The 20-odd people who have told me this over the years have collectively spent, by my estimate, about 20 minutes in Webster Groves. But each of them went to college in the 70s and 80s, and a fixture of sociology curricula in that era was a 1966 CBS documentary called 16 in Webster Groves. They are children of abundance, of privilege, of the good life in America. But is there something missing from their lives? Something that has nothing to do with good schools, nice houses, and two cars in the garage? Is something missing? I've tried to explain that the Webster Groves depicted in it bears minimal resemblance to the friendly, unpretentious town I knew when I was growing up. But it's useless to contradict TV. People look at me with suspicion, or hostility, or pity, as if I'm deeply in denial. 16 in Webster Groves, yes. Um, it is to Webster Groves as my run-in with Oprah Winfrey is to me. It's the thing that I'm sure after 30 years I'll still be answering questions about. And Franzen's run-in with Oprah had to do with his novel The Corrections, which won a National Book Award. It was chosen by Oprah for her book club, but Franzen expressed mixed feelings about her endorsement, so the book was unselected and he was uninvited from her show. It sparked a debate about high art and popular culture. He was branded by many a snob. And Franzen, like his hometown, has spent a lot of time trying to explain himself. Rather parallel uh, situations. Speaking of Midwestern innocence, um, uh, 
The town of Webster Groves welcomed CBS with open arms, never for a minute suspecting that they were being set up. Um, and I think I was probably more culpable than Webster Groves in the, the incident in which I annoyed a billionaire. But it was a similar thing. I was trying to talk in this very earnest, straightforward Midwestern way about the complexity of taste making in America and the ways in which you might, uh, even as you're appealing to one audience, be alienating another audience. There is virtually no room for anybody new to move into Webster Groves, and nobody sees any reason to move out. Well, it's a unique community. Yes, it is. Franzen, who was just a kid when the documentary was made, says it's not that it had the facts wrong, it was just the tone, the disapproval. As if, he says, Charles Kuralt never considered the possibility that maybe they just stumbled upon an unusually congenial community. We are skilled here in Webster Groves and in St. Louis at failing to think through the consequences of our action when we interact with the national media. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud to come from a, a town that would be taken advantage of like that. Uh, I think it's, it's better to be the town that's taken advantage of than to be part of the crowd that is taking advantage. The teenagers who are growing up in a thousand other college-bred, tree-shaded bedroom communities. And it's not like there's not dysfunction in the Midwest. It's not like in cold blood didn't happen here. It's not like crystal meth didn't start it, you know, really sink its roots into America right here in the Midwest. There's, there's plenty of dysfunction, but there is still something you don't quite realize the badness of the world until you leave. And, and I think uh, that innocence is money in the bank for, for the writer. She was leaving town on Friday and wouldn't be able to start showing the house until the very end of the month. So I, I think of myself as a Midwestern writer. I'm proud to think of myself as a Midwestern writer. Thank you.